Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night prayer and devotion time. Good evening, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, it's good to have you with us tonight. We had a, a, a few technical difficulties again this evening. That's why we're getting on a little bit, getting off to a little bit of a late start. But we're so glad to have you uh, join us tonight. Uh, tonight, we want to make sure and spend a little extra time emphasizing prayer. I reached out to our congregation earlier today and asked them to send in some prayer requests. And I, I got a few responses that um, back. So we're going to uh, spend some time sharing with those. So I'm so glad that you've taken a few minutes from your Wednesday night to um, hang out and uh, pray with us and, and spend a little bit of time in the scriptures. Um, so hello to everyone who's watching. Um, uh, my associate uh, and guest, special guest tonight is Elena. She is here in the office with me. I don't know if she's going to jump on camera and say hi in a minute or not, but she is present. Uh, as if you're watching this on YouTube, you saw her picture in the live feed. I'm going to do one slight camera adjustment here so that the shot is perfect. So interesting thing, uh, the reason we're starting late is uh, the GoPro was being a little bit difficult to work tonight. So we're coming to you from the iPhone as well as a uh, good old laptop. So <clears throat> I hope everyone is doing well because we're on the iPhone and uh, I've got a good look at the YouTube live chat. If you guys have any other prayer requests that you would like to share, um, we're... I'm so happy to receive those. And um, so I hope your week's going well. Uh, it has been a, a good week here. Oh, you coming to say Hi. hello? How are you doing, Elena? Good. You're doing good? You can look yeah. at the camera. How? Here, you got to scoot over a little bit for the iPhone. Oui. But you're doing well? Yeah. You're, you're having fun yeah. doing school at home? Not really. <laughs> it's a challenge. Stressful. Stressful. Is there anything special that we can pray for you about tonight? Um, just for it not to be stressful later, like it, like it to get handled and everything. Um, and, and then not to add science and social studies. Okay. Well, but you're doing good. Yeah. That's good. You're excited for the weekend. Depends what we're doing on the weekend. <laughs> Is there uh, any special... What are you reading right now? Princess and the Goblin. The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald? Yeah. Oh, that happens to be one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we love you too, Mom. And uh, your grandmommy just commented. Oh, okay. So... Anyways, uh, but Elena wanted to come down and be a part of our prayer time and devotional time tonight. So she's going to go back off camera, but she wanted to jump on and say hello. You guys didn't see her on Sunday. She was taking a break. So um, maybe eventually we'll pull Mr. Elliot in here, but he... Uh, he's kind of shy. Well, he's baking a cake right now. Yeah. So... It's his birthday cake. Yeah, so fascinating thing. <laughs> just... Okay, you're going to go... Do you want me to go right on the dry erase board now? No, no. It makes too much noise. You can come hang out over here. Okay, okay so uh, Lena is going to go back off camera and, and we'll continue on. But uh, she wanted to just hang out and say hi tonight too. So one of the interesting things that I read through this time is that people are doing a lot of baking. And you see a lot of articles on the internet. And this has been a time when there's just been loads. But one of them was, uh, is, has baking become the new baseball? And no, no, it hasn't. Can you do me a favor and turn the light down just a little bit? It's too bright. Yeah, it's a little too bright. So, you know, Wednesday nights we like they're perfect. We like to relax a little bit more. It's a little bit more informal setting than normally on Sunday. So um, that's why <clears throat> Elena's hanging out too. But yeah, I, I saw baking is the new baseball. So um, no, never. never. We will see. Baking so, never replaces baseball. Well, no, baking could never replace baseball. I agree. 
But I, I think what they're saying is because we can't you watch can't baseball watch right now, uh, you know, we've got to do something. So now uh, we're going to segue and just emphasize uh, our prayer request tonight. And a couple people shared with me some, and I have a great memory, but there, there's a lot on here. So tonight I'm using a very fancy teleprompter known as paper. To uh, share a couple of things with you, but a couple of prayer requests that have come in uh, are uh, concerns for all of the folks who are self-employed and who are relying on going to customers' homes uh, for their living. And right now, they're not working because going to other people's homes is is a dicey proposition at this point in time. So we want to remember them. Uh, we want to pray for them especially because they have no way to connect or collect unemployment and with public transportation has been rapidly reduced i know in you live in a rural area that may not be a real concern but around here our public transportation has been significantly reduced during this crisis uh, to protect everyone's health and because there's just not as many people using it right now so we want to remember uh, the folks who are, who are trying to travel to get food uh, via public transport, that it's just kind of a difficult proposition at this time. <clears throat> we also want to pray that folks do continue to use wisdom and guidance and, and stay home as much as possible uh, until we get guidance otherwise so that, uh, you know, we are able to continue to flatten the curve from the numbers I've seen. We are making great progress on this, but it is something to continue to exercise caution, wisdom, and, and you know, just be wise. As I've, as I've said the last couple of weeks, wisdom is a very important thing during this time. And, and also staying calm, not, not getting to the place where we're overcome with fear, uh, but just doing our very best to to approach this from a, a very level-headed place. But more than that, to know, to know that our trust is in God and that we're going to overcome this. We're going to get through this because of his guidance and his protection. So I want to remember that. Uh, we want to remember all of the congregations, especially the small and rural churches, who are really struggling right now because they're not able to meet and a lot of them are not able to do what we're doing here. We are so blessed and fortunate to have all of the technology at our fingertips and the opportunity to connect with you in various ways. As I said, we were late jumping on tonight because the, the GoPro is, is not acting right in terms of connecting. But thankfully, uh, I'm sitting here and not only am I speaking to you and connecting with you on Facebook, but also YouTube. And, and to make that production happen, I'm looking at my iPad and my as well. So it's, um, we're in two different places. Facebook, I'm, you're going to get an update. All right, we're back. Sorry about that, Facebook. We were having some connectivity issues there too. But as I was saying, we are so very blessed and fortunate uh, because even though we, we've had some technical hiccups and issues throughout, you know, this various process of connecting with you, we, we've got a lot of different resources. When, if one thing acts up, we're able to jump on another device and with only a, a small interruption in our service time. Whereas a lot of churches, they don't have any of these resources. They don't have any ability to connect at all. So we want to pray for them. And we want to pray too, because in this time, it's, it's very difficult for them financially. So we want to remember them and their pastors, who, if they're like me, are really struggling because we love people. We care about everyone. And this, this is hard because we miss seeing the people. And I know all of us miss one another, but one of the great benefits of our job is that we get to connect with people. Now, now that you know, we're, we're starting to, to figure out what's going on and how we're going to continue to be the church digitally, there's a lot of new things that we're working on and coming down the pipeline. But 
it, it, it's just been a it's been a leap it's been a, a time of figuring out what we're doing and how we're going to do it now and so just pray for you continue to pray for all pastors i appreciate all the prayer that folks are praying for me and the encouragement i've received uh, but if you are watching this uh, far off and you connect with another church as well pray for pray for the pastor pray for all pastors around the country as we're we're all trying to continue to connect and share the hope of jesus with everyone that we can even though our approach to how we do that is changing but the, but the great blessing is i think once we as we continue to evolve through this process that we're having an opportunity to connect with a lot of people that we didn't have the opportunity or ability to connect with even a month ago so we want to lift them up um, i know locally we want we're very blessed and fortunate that so far we have not had any folks in our church membership uh, in our church family who have tested positive for covid 19. Um, we you know we have one of our folks who has a, a relative that is recovering from it and doing well but just trying to stay um you know stay quarantined and away from family to not share it with anyone else so uh, but we're we're just very thankful that god has uh, protected us thus far but we want to remember the congregations where that's not the case because there are a lot of people who are uh, who have had folks they know and it's it's serious I've, I've talked to a couple people this week who said that they knew somebody that have dealt with uh, the coronavirus and so we want to remember those congregations as well um we um we need to of course continue to pray for all the folks on our front line our nurses our healthcare workers everyone in the hospitals grocery stores uh, restaurant industries who are uh, and even our folks in the various food production facilities meat packing plants um you know, though you know grocery large wholesale grocers and distributors i mean and these folks are all still connect you know around people all day long and they're providing services for us our postal workers our delivery folks uh, we need to be praying for them and uh, if you have an opportunity as your postman comes by from a safe distance or your ups driver uh, even if you have to shout at them i mean don't yell but but shout thank you just be sure that your you're you're connecting with these folks because they're they're doing a lot for us right now and we need to remember that i and we need to be thankful that our hospitals are are empty right now so that they're able to um there's not any many people in there because they're they're putting some of the regular services on hold so that they can be geared up <laughs> and uh able to help those who are, are sick and, and also keep those who need procedures isolated until they are able to uh, treat them safely so um you want to remember that I'll flip to my other notes uh again um you know we've got some healthcare folks in our own church that we are praying for uh, both doctors and nurses and uh, some are close by some are in other states uh, some of our folks who grew up in our church and have moved away we want to remember all of them uh, and just continue to pray for god's protection on them because they are both vital and essential parts of our church family but also what they're doing now is is just super incredible and so we want to remember them as they are caring for people and being being willing to put themselves in a position to uh, face this thing head on uh, we want to remember all of our students both in high school and college who are seniors right now and there are so many of them who are not able to go through the normal things of senior life uh, uh, you know the graduation prom uh, the build-up to all of these things and that's hard right now I will tell you something that's really neat if you've not seen it on YouTube yet if you know who John Krasinski is I think I've mentioned this 
Uh, he played Jim on The Office right now, and you can see him on Amazon Prime as Jack Ryan. He is doing his own show on YouTube now called Some Good News. If you type in SGN, it'll pull it up. Uh, he is uh, just trying to spread some good news around and, and share uh, some kindness and, and, and highlight all of the different ways that people are coming together right now in this crisis to show love and compassion and, and also to make people smile. I will tell you uh, that each episode, it gets a little dusty uh, because you're just overwhelmed with all of the kindness and all of the things that he's willing to do. Uh, if you're a Hamilton fan, oh, wow. yeah, Lin-Manuel Miranda pops up. And the, the thing he did last week is he Friday night he hosted a prom on Facebook for all of the seniors who couldn't make it. It was a short program, but he had a lot of big stars on there. So, you know, you you don't think about all of these things that we normally do until we can't do them. But, you know, there's a lot of students who are missing their proms. There are a lot of students who are not gonna get to experience high school graduation because of everything that's happened. So we wanna remember them and I encourage you to reach out to them and find ways to support them through this time. I know there are various uh, adopt-a-senior programs all around. Uh, if there's an opportunity for you to connect with that, I want to encourage you to do that. Um, also, I just, one of our other church members sent in a, a request that we continue just to pray that we keep the faith and we hold strong in this time and, and stay positive. That's really tough. You know, I, I know that all of us have gone through the roller coaster of emotions that you know one minute we've been like okay we can get through this and other times it, it's tough and maybe you you felt restless i know that's something that we've dealt with is just being ready to get back to life as we know it i do believe that day is going to come i'm not sure when it's going to come but i believe it's coming and, and as i've said before good news is is on the way and in this time, one of the biggest things that we need to do is put our faith and our hope in God and realize that is, it's, that's the strength that's going to get us through. And I'm going to share some more about this Sunday morning uh, in my sermon, but I want to talk with you a little bit of what, how God is opening doors even in the midst of all of this. And, and so... Stay tuned for that, but but I want you to know while we're all feeling restless, there are some really good things that God is, is at work doing, and God's at work doing those things in you. So, um, <laughs> so also, um, you know, have some praises. I, one of our folks uh, said that, that God has really given her a, a peace during this time and, and has helped her through uh, struggling with the the you know the whole fear issue because again i know i say this week after week after week after week but i'm telling you we are still dealing with two pandemics one is covid19 and the other is fear and it's everywhere and i want to continue to encourage you the same ways that i've i've done over the past few weeks and that is when those things when you find the fear just just creeping in and crippling you, I, I want to encourage you to pray. I want to encourage you, if, if there's a, a passage of scripture that is near and dear to your heart, that is one that lifts your spirits when you're facing these things, I just want to encourage you to read it again or carry it with you. You know, the great thing, there's a, a hundred different Bible apps. I use version because it was the first one I found and it's great. So I just held on to it. It's free. Uh, you can search any passage in the in scripture. You can highlight it. You can even uh, make a really cool Instagram esque background and just have a photo of it. But but I would hold on to those things through this time because that's what's going to carry us through. And we are still struggling with the fear as much as we are the virus itself. And it is something that we have to be concerned about and and be wise with but we also need to trust God and know that we're gonna get through this we're gonna we're gonna get through it sure there are obstacles all around us there's gonna be obstacles from the 
the effects and the toll that this has taken on our lives, the economy, you name it. We're, we've got some obstacles that we're going to be facing. But I'm telling you, they're also going to create a lot of opportunities for us. Uh, and the more we see that through our faith and the fact that this is not a surprise to God, we're going to get through it. God is going to carry us through. So I'm going to pray now over our request, and then I'm going to just share a, just a short little devotional, and we'll be done tonight. Uh, I see some folks jumping in on Facebook that I've not seen in a long time. And so one of them is one of my cousins, uh, Jerry Jack Smith. Good to see you. And uh, my one of my dear friends uh, from College Station, Texas, uh, Bill Muskie. I see that you jumped in on Facebook. Hello, my old friend. It's good to see you as well. Um, so now uh, we're going to pray. And, uh, and then, like I said, I'm going to share just a, a brief word with you and we'll be done for tonight. So let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. It's your strength. It's, it's your power that's going to get us through this time. God, we want to remember all of our folks on the front lines, our doctors, our nurses, our grocery store workers, our UPS deliverers. Um, God, our, our postal workers, our, um, all the various food delivery services, our, our grocers, our wholesale distributors, all of these folks who are still in big group settings while many of us are isolated. God, we pray for protection over them. We pray, God, for your healing touch to be upon those who are struggling and do have coronavirus, Lord. Uh, God, we pray that you would continue to run this thing out of the world. God, we pray that you would continue to give us hope. Lord, we pray for all of the seniors um, graduating both from college and from high school. Lord, we just pray that you would be an encouragement to them through this time. Uh, Lord, we want to uh, thank you that you are giving us wisdom, God, to, to stay home as much as we can to not spread this thing around to our friends and our family. We want to pray for the vulnerable parts of our population. God, we pray for protection over them, the most vulnerable. Lord, we uh, want to pray for those who are still awaiting other treatments, who have been put on hold right now through this crisis. We pray that you would continue to strengthen their bodies. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would continue to help us to know that our, our hope needs to be fueled by our faith, by our connection with you, Lord, that you would give us hope, God, that you would give us a passion to share the gospel in this time. Lord, we love you, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, one brief word I want to share with you from Luke 24, one of my favorite passages. It comes from where Jesus appears to the disciples on the, or the two guys, two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. This is Luke 24, verses 36 and following, where he says, 30, 36 through 49, says, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself, oh, got ahead of myself, sorry, Luke 24, 13 through 35. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened, and as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know about these things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who is going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the, the third day since all of this took place. 
In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish are you? And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things to enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? So one quick thought that I want to share with you is... During the, this second resurrection appearance that the, the good Dr. Luke shares with us, Jesus appears and the two disciples, one named Cleopas, they don't recognize him. They don't know who he is. They don't know where this guy's come from. But what's amazing is that Jesus shares with them when he everything that's happened and how the Messiah was to come and suffer and die. And they're amazed. They're, they are just completely awestruck as they walk down the road with him. And then even more surprised when Jesus opens their eyes and they see him for who he truly is. And after Jesus disappears from their sight and they're about to return back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples what has happened. They looked at each other and they said, well, this makes sense because we're not our hearts burning within us as he opened the scriptures to us. And to me, this is what I want to share with you tonight really briefly. Just ask you a question. Are our hearts burning? Are, are we connecting and allowing the Holy Spirit to continue just as Jesus opened the scriptures to these two disciples who were heartbroken because they truly hoped that Jesus was going to restore Israel, who that he truly was the Messiah. And after the crucifixion and now the third day, they were still trying to make sense of things even when the tomb was empty. But Jesus shared the scriptures with them, opened them up to them. Our, and, and their hearts were just totally filled with joy and wonder. And the, the challenge that I, I have for us to consider tonight is are we allowing, are we putting ourselves in a place to where God can continue, where Jesus can, through the Holy Spirit, continue to open His Word to us and, and ignite our hearts with passion, with excitement, even in the midst of everything we're facing right now, that, that, that we can find a peace, that we can find a way to look through this situation and see hope on the other side. To say, yes, this is a challenge. This is not what we hoped it would be, but we're going to get through it. Because we know that God is going to bring us through. And I, I, I just am fully convinced that... God wants to open our hearts in this way. That God wants us to be able to know that he's, he's not left us. That Jesus did an even greater miracle in dying for our sins and rising again from the dead. And with that promise comes a resurrection, a hope of a new life and a hope for this life. And what a great hope it is. And I just want to encourage you midweek. Here we are on Wednesday. And I know if, if you're like me or, or, or like 
so many folks that I've talked to, if it's not Wednesday or Sunday, all of the days kind of run together. You know, I've joked with Alma and the kids that every day is Quinn's Day. And what is Quinn's Day? Except for Wednesday and, and Sunday. Sunday. Right. But every other day is, it's just a made up day. Because all of the days are, are running together. But I'm going to tell you, uh, there there is hope and there's joy to be found even in the midst of this storm. Even in the midst of everything we're going through. Because again, I want to tell you, I keep seeing this. And I keep seeing God open doors as I walk down the street with our family. Practicing social distancing, to be sure. But more and more people are talking to each other. They are waving. They are smiling. And this is a very big deal. Because so many of us are not in a hurry right now because we don't have, there's not things pushing and pulling at us. And I want to tell you, this is a great time to connect with the hope that we have, to, con to put ourselves in a place where we ask God, hey, my life is crazy. You know, if, if you're like us, you've got kids at home trying to make sense of homeschool, you're, you're working from home and, and all of these things are different, or maybe you're just kind of stuck wherever you are. I just want to encourage you and challenge you to put yourself, ask God to help you get to a place where you can find that peace, where even if it's just for two minutes a day, even if that's where you start, say, God, I need hope. I, I need you to, to give me this passion, a love for you and a love for other people. Because I want to tell you, God is going to use us. God is using you right now. And what's amazing is we have the ability to connect with each other even though we have to remain physically separate. So this week, I want to encourage you to go back to Luke 24, starting in verse 19. Look at that passage as Jesus opened the scriptures to these two men who were just so downcast and so overwhelmed because they'd watched Jesus die and still couldn't make sense of the resurrection that he opened the scriptures to them and their hearts burned within them. And I want to challenge you tonight, again, just encourage you, take some time every day, even if it's two minutes. Say, God, open the scriptures to me. Give me hope. Give me peace. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you, God can use that. God can use you in ways that you cannot imagine. So I'm going to pray really fast one more time for all of us. And then we're going to... Uh, be sign off for the evening. I want to uh, just again thank you for taking a brief moment out of your time, out of your week to uh, spend some time with us praying, to spend some time in the scriptures. Um, thank you everyone who has been with us tonight. Those of you who are, are going to connect with us later, this goes up on Facebook and YouTube later on. Thank you so much for uh, catching up with us later on as well. So I'm going to pray and then we will be uh, signed off for the evening. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for our time to connect with you, to connect with hope and peace and mercy. Would you fill our hearts? Would you ignite a passion for you, Lord, that other people can see in us, even if it is through FaceTime, even if it is through a text or a Facebook post, they can see, God, that you are at work in our lives God, and, and it might ignite curiosity in their hearts that you might turn them back to you because the greatest healing we need, Lord, is not simply to be rid of this awful virus, but God, to be, and, and, and our greatest healing is not even to be rid of all the fear going around it too. We need those things. But the greatest thing we need is grace and mercy. And we need, Lord, to, to, to turn our hearts back to you. And I pray that in this time we would do that and that as we, as, as your followers are turning back to you, that you would use us to, to help others as they are looking, as they are curious, as they are in need of the grace and peace and mercy that only you can offer. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, those of you who are on Facebook can't see, Elena's holding up a Domino's pizza sign. <laughs> thank you. All right, I got to sign off now. So thank you, thank you all again for hanging out with us tonight. We will be live again Sunday morning, eleven o'clock Eastern Time, ten o'clock Central. We hope to see you then. God bless you and have a wonderful night. Facebook. <laughs>